Hello teachers, hello students. In this first lesson of tutorial class, I will explain about photosynthesis. At the end of this lesson, you will be able to tell the importance of photosynthesis. You will be able to locate the site of photosynthesis. You will be able to differentiate the difference between cyclic and the non-cyclic photosynthesis. You will be able to distinguish between photosystem one and the photosystem two. Let we see about an overview of photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is very important for the life in our planet because by the process of photosynthesis, the solar energy can be captured and changed into the chemical energy. In this process, plants and a certain algae survive by producing energy from the sunlight and carbon dioxide, also water, because green plants and uh, certain algae have a chlorophyll or some pigments which has able to capture the solar energy and uh, transform to that of the chemical energy. Therefore, beside playing the vital role in surviving the life of plants, photosynthesis supports the whole world by regulating oxygen and the carbon dioxide level. Therefore, photosynthesis sustains the life, which in turn, it is essential to maintain the food chain and food web. Here, in the process of photosynthesis, Green plants can capture the light energy. This light energy can be transformed to the chemical energy. In the process of photosynthesis, carbon dioxide can be entered to the plant leaf. Then also water can be entered into the plant through the root. And the water, as well as carbon dioxide, can be used in the process of photosynthesis in the presence of chlorophyll and the light energy. And finally, the, by the process of photosynthesis, organic compound, which is glucose, can be formed. In the process, oxygen can be released to the atmosphere as a byproduct. Therefore, photosynthesis is the process by which green plants and the certain other organisms can transform light energy into a chemical energy. In addition, Photosynthesis is a series of a chemical reactions that uses light energy to assemble carbon dioxide into glucose and other carbohydrates. Then the plant uses water and it can release oxygen to the atmosphere during the process of photosynthesis. What do you think the importance of photosynthesis? Some points on importance of photosynthesis are photosynthesis is important because it is a number one source of oxygen in the atmosphere. Also, it contributes to carbon cycle among earth and ocean, plants and animals, as well as photosynthesis contributes to the symbiotic relationship among plants, humans, and animals. Also, it serves as the primary energy process for plants. Then, plants, multicellular algae, some protists, cyanobacteria, and the purple sulfur bacteria are photoautotrophs. Photoautotrophs means organisms that can use a photon or a light for the process of photosynthesis. Now, let me explain the external and internal structure of leaf. Here, leaf has different parts. This are to show that different parts of the external structure of leaf. But most of the time, in the internal sections of the leaf, they have the special structures or cell that help them to photosynthesize.
or to make their own food from inorganic compounds such as carbon dioxide and water. But from their external part, the leaf has, uh, it is a waxy coating structures, which is so-called cuticle. Again, a leaf has three main parts from their external parts. These are the leaf base, which is at found at the base of the leaf, and the leaf lamina, which is uh, the surface of this leaf, and again, the petiole. These are some external structures of the leaf. Leaf has pores also. The pores on the leaf is so-called stomata. By using this stomata, or through this stomata, carbon dioxide enter into the leaf for the process of photosynthesis. One of the important parts of the leaf, which is mesophile, which is found in the internal structures of the leaf. The mesophile is made up of a specialized cell, which is so-called parenchyma cells. This parenchyma cells, which is found between the lower and upper epidermis of the leaf. Here, mesophiles are specialized for photosynthesis, and therefore, they contain a special, which is important for photosynthesis, which we call that chloroplast. Here, there are two types of mesophile. They are palisade mesophile and the spongy mesophile. Now, let me see the spongy mesophile, one type of the mesophile. It has many large air spaces between its cells, but the other one is the palisade mesophile. Palisade mesophile, cells are near the upper surface of the leaf where they receive more sunlight. They are therefore contain more chloroplast than that of the spongy mesophile. Now, let me see this diagram. As I've described earlier, the layer of the leaf at the upper epidermis and again, the lower epidermis. The mesophile cells are found between this upper epidermis and the lower epidermis. Between this, the first one, which is the palisade mesophile, is found near to the upper epidermis, whereas the spongy mesophiles are below the palisade mesophiles. Here, the cells of the Palisade mesophiles are somewhat compact, whereas that of the cells of spongy mesophiles are a large air space between the cells. That is why the spongy mesophiles is so-called spongy. It's, if you see from this diagram, there is a large space between the cells of the spongy mesophile. As a result, it appears as the spongy mesophile. The site of photosynthesis. In plants, the highest density of chloroplast is found in the mesophile cells of the leaf. If you see the structure of this leaf or the leaf cross section, the leaf has the epidermis and again the upper epidermis and the lower epidermis. Between the upper epidermis and the lower epidermis, there is another layer which is so-called mesophile cell layer. And this, if you take a single mesophile cell, and this single mesophile cell, there is organelle, which is called chloroplast. This chloroplast is unique to plant cells. It is not found in the animal cell. Again, this chloroplast has it is own structures or membrane, which is outer membrane, and again, the inner membrane space. Also, it has the inner membrane. Inside the inner membrane of chloroplast, there is the space which is filled with a fluid, so-called the stroma. A stroma is the site where light-independent reaction takes place. In addition, there is the 
disc like structure inside the stroma this disc like structure is so called thylakoid thylakoid the stack of thylakoid can form a grana but grana is the site where light dependent photosynthesis takes place the internal parts of this thylakoid is so called thylakoid lumen the stroma is the fluid filled matrix where the light independent photosynthesis takes place but within the stroma there is another structure or membrane which can form a disc shaped compartment is which we call that thylakoid thylakoid here this means the another membrane which is found inside the stroma which we call that thylakoid but the inside parts of this thylakoid is called also thylakoid lumen the stack of this thylakoid can form grana here the interior of the thylakoid is so called thylakoid lumen and again the most plant species uh, the thylakoids are interconnected to form grana the grana are stacks up to 100 disc like structures and so called thylakoids where the light dependent stage of photosynthesis can take place within the thylakoid there is a photosynthetic pigment which is called chlorophyll that is what makes the plant cells which is unique and gives the ability to capture sunlight energy for the process of photosynthesis therefore this pigment is found inside the thylakoid which is so called chlorophyll some thylakoids have a tubular extension that join up the thylakoids in adjacent grana this is so called as the immigrana lamella here that is the immigrana lamella here to review the leaf has upper epidermis and again the lower epidermis between the upper epiderm and the lower epiderm there is another layer which is called mesophyll cell layer and this mesophyll cell layer there is a cell which is so called mesophyll cell and if you take this single mesophyll cell and this single mesophyll cell there is organelle which is so called chloroplast but the chloroplast is an organelle which is not found in the animal cell but it is found in plant cell and in its internal structure it has different structure which is very important for the process of photosynthesis especially the thylakoid this thylakoid is it is a disc like structures the internal parts of this thylakoid is called the thylakoid lumen here inside the thylakoid there is a pigment which is important for capturing a light energy which is so called chlorophyll therefore because of the presence of chlorophyll inside this thylakoid they capture a sunlight and the stack of this thylakoid can form a grana as a result light dependent photosynthesis takes place inside the grana but uh, the light independent photosynthesis takes place inside the stroma which is a fluid filled matrix uh, inside the interior parts of the chloroplast now let we see about the photosynthetic pigments photosynthetic cell contains special pigments that absorb the light energy different pigments respond to different wavelengths of visible light the pigments are chemical compounds which reflect only certain wavelengths of visible light this makes them appear 
colorful. When we see your environment or your surrounding, you can see different colors of plants, particularly plants are green. They look like green because a green wavelength is of light reflected from the plants. Here, the ability of the pigment is to absorb certain wavelengths is more important than the reflection in the process of photosynthesis. Because in the process of photosynthesis, what we need is not the light wavelengths that is reflected, rather, what we need is the light wavelengths which is absorbed because it is, can help to break a water molecules in the process of photosynthesis to make organic compounds. Then in plants, algae, in the cyanobacteria, the pigments or chlorophylls can capture, or the light capturing pigments can capture energy of sunlight for the process of photosynthesis. There are three basic classes of pigments. The first one, and which is very important one, is chlorophyll. Here, chlorophylls are greenish pigments which contain a porphyrin ring. Porphyrin ring has a magnesium atom at its center, which is very important for the process of photosynthesis. Therefore, this ring has the potential to gain or lose electrons easily. There are several kinds of chlorophyll, but the most important one and abundant chlorophyll is chlorophyll A. Even if there are many chlorophylls, the one which is very important for the process of photosynthesis is chlorophyll A. Let we see about the chlorophyll A. Chlorophyll A, it is a greenish pigment found in all plants. Also, it is found in algae. And again, it is found in cyanobacteria. This chlorophyll A is the primary pigment responsible for photosynthesis. Even if there are another types of chlorophyll, the one which is abundant and very important, also the primary pigment which is responsible for the process of photosynthesis is chlorophyll A. Because this chlorophyll A has high rate of light absorption than other chlorophylls. The other chlorophyll is that chlorophyll B. Chlorophyll B occurs only in green algae and in plants. The other type of chlorophyll is chlorophyll C. But chlorophyll C is found only in the photosynthetic membranes of chromista and diano flagellates. The other pigment is so-called the carotenoids. These carotenoids are usually red, orange, or yellow pigments. And they include formular compounds which is so-called carotene. This carotene gives the carrot their color. If you see the color of the carrot, it gets its own color from this compound, which is so-called carotene. And carotenoids cannot transfer sunlight energy directly to the process of photosynthetic pathway, but must pass the absorbed energy to chlorophyll. Therefore, it is called as the accessory pigment. Because even if the carotenoids can capture sunlight energy, the sunlight energy which is captured by carotenoids cannot directly participate in the pathway of photosynthesis. But they give or transfer the sunlight energy which is captured by carotenoids to chlorophyll. That is why carotenoids is called as the accessory pigment. The other photosynthetic pigment is fucosanthin. Fucosanthin is very visible accessory pigment. It is also like carotenoid. Fucosanthin is accessory pigment. 
because even if it has the ability to capture sunlight, the light which is captured by focosanthin cannot directly enter into the process of photosynthesis, but rather they pass their light energy to that of chlorophyll. And therefore, they are also called the accessory pigment. This focosanthin is brown in color. That means it is a brown pigment whose colors keep other brown algae as well as diatoms. The other pigment is so-called phycoblins. These phycoblins are water-soluble, blue pigment. That means the colors of this pigment is blue. It is found in the cytoplasm or in the stroma of the chloroplast. They occur only in the cyanobacteria and the rhodophyta. Now, let me come to the absorption spectra of photosynthetic pigments. Here, we have seen that there are different photosynthetic pigments. This includes the chlorophyll, carotin, and again, uh, focosanthin. But all these pigments have different absorption spectra. Now, let me see the absorption spectra of photosynthetic pigments. For example, if you see the absorption spectra of chlorophyll A, chlorophyll B, and the carotenoids, they absorb it at different wavelengths spectra. Here, chlorophyll A absorbs violet blue and reddish orange red uh, wavelengths, whereas chlorophyll B absorbs mostly blue and yellow light wavelengths. Both chlorophyll A and the chlorophyll B also absorb light of other wavelengths with less intensity. However, none of them absorb the green wavelengths of light. Why? In the green plant is, what is reflected is that the green wavelengths. That is why the plant is looks like green in color. Therefore, the green wavelengths of light cannot be absorbed by the plant cells. Therefore, the plant looks like a green. Therefore, this green wavelengths cannot participate in the process of photosynthesis. So that the leaf looks green because light is reflected to our eye instead of being absorbed by the leaf. Only absorbed light largely are the blue wavelengths of light and the red wavelengths of light largely absorbed. And it is useful in the process of photosynthesis. The other one is carotenoids. Carotenoids are ubiquitous and essential pigments in the process of photosynthesis. They absorb in the blue-green region of the solar spectra and transform absorbed energy to the chlorophyll. Now, let me see this diagram. Here, from this vertical axis, you can see that the amount of light absorbed by different chlorophyll. The type of pigment is what we want to see here is that chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B, as well as carotenoids. But in the vertical axis, this shows that the amount of light absorbed. Here in the horizontal axis, this is to show that the wavelengths of light in nanometer. If you look, this diagram, it represents for the absorption rate of chlorophyll at different wavelengths of light. Whereas this green diagram is to show that the absorption rate of that of chlorophyll A. Whereas the yellow graph is to show that the absorption rate of different wavelengths by the pigment so-called carotenoid. Here, Chlorophyll mostly absorbed at the blue regions of light wavelengths. Here, this one is the blue region. And again, this one is the green region. And this one is the red region. Out of these different regions of wavelengths, chlorophyll 
A is mostly absorbed at blue light wavelengths. Also, chlorophyll A can be absorbed at red regions of visible wavelengths. Therefore, chlorophyll A is very important and it is abundant. Also, it has plays a critical or it is a primary pigment which is important in the process of photosynthesis. Therefore, this chlorophyll can be mostly absorbed in the blue region of light spectrum as well as in the red region of light spectrum. Whereas, the chlorophyll B is mostly absorbed also it has in the blue region. Also, it can be absorbed around the red region. In another case, if you see that of the carotenoids, carotenoids absorb the light wavelengths in the blue to green regions of solar spectrum. Here, around this, it is blue. Around this, it is green. Therefore, carotenoid can absorb the light wavelengths at blue to green wavelengths. Now, let me come to another point, which is the very important point in the process of photosynthesis, so-called light-dependent and light-independent reactions. Here, in this lesson, we will mainly focus only on the light-dependent reaction, but in the coming lesson, we'll see about the light-independent reaction. Here, inside a chloroplast, photosynthesis occurs in two stages. The first stage is the light-dependent reactions. And the second stage is the light-independent, or which is the Kelvin cycle reaction. Now, let me see them separately. The first one, the light-dependent reactions. In the light-dependent reaction, this can be cyclic and the non-cyclic photophosphorylation. Here, in the light-dependent reaction, it converts solar energy into chemical energy. In the process, the addition of phosphate can be takes place, which is so-called photophosphorylation with the help of light energy. Here, photophosphorylation means it is the process of synthesizing energy-rich ATP molecules by transferring the phosphate group into ADP, which is adenosine diphosphate molecule, in the process of light. Therefore, photophosphorylation is of two types. One of the photophosphorylation is that non-cyclic photophosphorylation. The other one is the cyclic photophosphorylation. Now, let me see separately the cyclic and the non-cyclic photophosphorylation. This one is the non-cyclic photophosphorylation. The reaction center is chlorophyll, but as the name indicates, the process is not cyclic. The movement of the electron is only in one direction, or it is a unidirectional. And this is also called a Z scheme, uh, photophosphorylation. Why it is Z? If you see the structure of this diagram, it is somewhat looks like a Z shape structure. Z shape structure. That is why it is so called as a Z scheme. The reaction center for this non cyclic photophosphorylation is that chlorophyll. And again, the movement of the electrons in non cyclic manner for synthesizing ATP molecules using energy from excited electrons provided by the photosystem, too. Here, in the process of non-cyclic one, the process is not cyclic, it is non-cyclic. That means the movement of electron is only in unidirectional or in one direction. In the process of non-cyclic photophosphorylation, two photosystems involve it. One of the photosystems is that photosystem two, and the other one is photosystem one. And the process, when the light energy captured by the photosystem, one, the electrons which is found inside the chlorophyll of photosystem, two, become 
excited, which causes photolysis of water, photolysis of water, by the energy of light which comes or captured by the photosystem one, water becomes dissociated into hydrogen ion and oxygen. It is at this stage when the oxygen can become released to the atmosphere. Therefore, when the light energy become captured by chlorophyll inside the photosystem too, the electrons become excited, then the excitations of these electrons can motivate the hydrolysis of these water molecules. Then the electrons again become excited and it becomes accepted by the primary electron carriers. Then it passes toward this another photosystem, which is photosystem one. But in the photosystem one, even if the light energy becomes strike that of or enter into that of the chlorophyll, the electron which is found inside the chlorophyll of photosystem one become escape the molecule. And it is replaced by the electrons which comes from the photosystem two. And the electrons which comes from the photosystem two become boosted and get another energy from the slight energy here and again it is excited and accepted by another electron carriers. Then finally, these uh, electrons move down and finally accepted by this reducing agent, which is so-called NADPH. In this process, they release ATP or energy for the process of photosynthesis. Here, in the main cyclic one, water is split, which provides a source of electrons and protons. Here, the lost electron by the photosystem two are occupied by the chlorophyll 700, which is found in the photosystem one. And it cannot return it back to that of chlorophyll 618, which is found inside photosystem two. Here, the complete movement of electron is in a unidirectional or in non cyclic manner. Now, let me see this movement of electrons, which is in a unidirectional pathway. This is the direction of flow of electrons. Therefore, in this case, the movement of electron is only one direction. It starts from the photosystem two, then finally accepted by this energy-rich compound, which is a reducing agent, which is so-called NADPH positive. Here, when the light energy enter into photosystem two, the electrons inside the chlorophyll of photosystem two become excited and causes the hydrolysis of water. Then electrons become excited. When they excited, accepted by the primary electron acceptor, then move down to the other photosystem, which is photosystem one. In the photosystem one, the light energy when reached to chlorophyll inside the photosystem one, the electron inside the photosystem uh, one become escape the molecules of the chlorine, and this electron replaced by the electrons which comes from photosystem two. And again, these electrons become boosted and ex excited, finally accepted by the primary electron acceptor for the second time. And it moves downward is the final electron acceptor in this case, not pH. In this process of non-cyclic photophosphorylation, two electron transport chain involved. The first electron transport chain is the photosystem two to photosystem one. The second electron transport chain is that starting from photosystem one to that of the final electron acceptor in this case. Here, light absorbed by chlorophyll, which drives the transfer of electrons and hydrogen ions, hydrogen ions from water to an acceptor which is so called NADP positive, which is so called nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide phosphate, where they temporarily stored. Here, electrons released by 
the photosystem two, in this case P700, which is chlorophyll inside the photosystem one, and are carried by the primary acceptors and are finally passed on to the NADP. Here, the reduced form of NADP is with NADPH. At this time, when electrons excited from the photosystem two, then it is accepted by the primary electron acceptor. What is the primary electron acceptor in photosystem two? The primary electron acceptor in photosystem two is that ferrofatin. Ferrofatin. This ferrofatin accepts electron from photosystem two. Then, in this electron transport chain, the electron pass down to that of photosystem one. During the process, energy becomes released. Then, when the electron which is excited from photosystem two reaches on photosystem one, the light energy which enter into photosystem one is strike or captured by the chlorophyll inside the photosystem one, excites the electrons in the chlorophyll and that electrons leave or escape the chlorophyll. But that chlorophyll become replaced by electrons which comes from photosystem two. Then these electrons which started from photosystem two become boosted and gain energy and excited by the light energy at photosystem one. And again, it is accepted by another primary electron acceptor. That means the electron acceptor which can accept electrons from the photosystem one which is so-called ferrodexin. Then finally, the electrons move down to this wardis and finally accepted by the NADP positive. In this process, ATP, which is important for the process of photosynthesis, could be uh, synthesized or produced. Now look, the movement of these electrons. Here, this is the direction of flow of electrons, which is finally accepted by the NADPH. This is how the directions of flow of non-cyclic photosynthesis, which is a unidirectional flow. The light reaction uses solar energy to reduce NADP to NADPH by adding a pair of electrons along with hydrogen ion. Then the light reaction also generates ATP using chemosmosis that powers the additions of phosphate group to ADP. ADP means adenosine diphosphate. But what is chemosmosis means? Chemosmosis means is the movement of ions across the semi-permeable membrane bounded structures down their electrochemical gradients. In the process, ATP will be formed. Thus, Light energy is initially converted to chemical energy in the form of two compounds in the non-cyclic photophosphorylations. Here, one is NADPH and ATP. NADPH is a source of electron which act as a reducing power that can be passed along to an electron acceptor which reduces it. Here, while ATP is the versatile energy currency of cells, notice that the light reaction do not produce sugar. Still, in the light reaction, there are different chemical compounds which is produced, which is energy-rich compounds, such as NADPH and ATP. But one of the main targets of photosynthesis to produce organic compound, or the plants need to make their own food by the process of photosynthesis. One of the important compound here to be produced by the process of photosynthesis is that sugar. But in the light-dependent photophosphorylation, sugar cannot be produced. But at this stage, what is produced are the NADPH, which is energy-carrying compounds, and again, 
ATP. ATP. Now, let me summarize the non-cyclic photophosphorylation. As we have seen earlier, the non-cyclic photophosphorylation, the direction of flow of electrons is unidirectional. Now, this starts from the photosystem two. Now, in the photosystem two, when the light energy enters into, or when it's captured by the chlorophyll, the electrons become excited, and which causes hydrolysis of water, which is the process so-called photolysis. When water hydrolyzed, it produces proton as well as oxygen. In the process of photosynthesis, oxygen released to the atmosphere, which is important for all aerobic organisms. Aerobic organisms need oxygen for the process of cellular respiration. Therefore, the source of this oxygen is the process of photosynthesis. It is released at the stage of first stage of photosynthesis, which is light-dependent photosynthesis. It takes place in the photosystem too, because when the light energy enters into chlorophyll, this light energy uh, becomes, excites the electrons in the chlorophyll. This initiates the hydrolysis of water, but when water hydrolyzed, oxygen released to the atmosphere. Therefore, in the process of photosynthesis, what is the source of oxygen? If you say that the source of oxygen is water, you are true. Because in the process of photosynthesis, the oxygen which is released to the atmosphere is, comes from the dissociation of water. Then, now, the light energy captured by the chlorophyll, then when the electrons in the chlorophyll become excited, then this electron become accepted by the primary electron acceptor in the electron transport chain. Or the first or the primary electron acceptor that accepts electrons from the photosystem two is theophatin, which is the primary electron acceptor. Then from the theophatin, it moves down to photosystem one. In the process, energy is released, especially in the cytochrome complex. Then here in the photosystem one, the electrons which excited from photosystem two, they come enter into photosystem one. Then when the light energy enter into this photosystem one, the electrons in the chlorophyll of photosystem one become excited and it becomes escaped from the molecules of the chlorophyll. But the electrons which escaped from the chlorophyll of photosystem one can be replaced by the electron which comes from photosystem two. Then electrons which comes from the photosystem two become boosted or gain energy from the solar energy which is entered into the photosystem one. Then it again re-excited from the photosystem one. When this electron become excited from photosystem one, the primary electrons which accept this electron is so-called ferrodoxin. Then from the ferrodoxin, the electron can pass or, or transport it down and finally accepted by the energy storing compound, which is so-called NADPH, NADPH. This is how the non-cyclic photophosphorylation completed. Now, let me come to another photophosphorylation, which is cyclic photophosphorylation. As it is name indicates that, in the cyclic photophosphorylation, the movement of electron is in a cyclic manner. In a cyclic manner. Look, if you see this electron, it starts from photosystem one, then it moves to different parties or passes from different electron acceptor, and finally it returns to photosystem one. Therefore, in the cyclic photophosphorylation, only one photosystem participates. That photosystem is photosystem one, photosystem one. Now, 
let we see this deeply. Cyclic photophosphorylation. Electron travel in a cyclic manner for synthesizing ATP molecules. This process usually takes place in the thylakoid membrane and uses photosystem 1. And the chlorophyll which is involved in the photosystem 1 is so-called chlorophyll P700. The electrons are transferred uh, back to the photosystem 1 or the chlorophyll 700. This downward movement of electrons from an acceptor to P700 results in the formations of ATP molecules. And in this case, the primary electron acceptor, which is so-called ferrodoxin. In this case, when the light energy becomes rich on or captured by the chlorophyll in the photosystem, one, the electrons in the chlorophyll become excited. As that of in the photosystem, two, there is no hydrolysis of water in this case. But when the light energy captured by chlorophyll inside the photosystem one, electrons in the chlorophyll of photosystem one become excited and it becomes accepted by the primary electron acceptor. And it is transported by different electron acceptor. In the process, in BC1 complex, they produces ATP. And finally, this electron returned back to photosystem one. That is why it is, the process is so-called chlorophyll. But by this process, only ATP is produced. There is no production of NADPH in this case. Also, there is no uh, photolysis. Here, this is the direction of movement of the electrons. Now, the electrons start from the photosystem one, then it again become accepted to the photosystem one in the process of cyclic one. Now, let me compare the process of photophosphorylations, both non-cyclic photophosphorylation and the cyclic photophosphorylation. In non-cyclic photophosphorylation, the path of electron is non-cyclic, but in the cyclic one, the path of electron is cyclic. Here, the first electron acceptor or the source of electron in non-cyclic one is water, because in the uh, non-cyclic one, when the light energy captured by the chlorophyll, electrons inside the chlorophyll become excited and causes photolysis. Therefore, the source of electron in the case of non-cyclic one is water. But in the case of cyclic one, the source of electron is photosystem one or P700. The other point is that last electron acceptor or destination of the electron. In the non-cyclic photophosphorylation, the destination of the electron is the NADP, NADP. Whereas the destination of electrons or the final electron acceptor in the cyclic one is photosystem one or P700. Here in this case, the electron starts from photosystem one and again it is accepted by, finally, by the photosystem one. The product, the products of non-cyclic and the cyclic photophosphorylation. The useful product here in the non-cyclic one is the ATP is one of the main products which is produced by the process of non-cyclic photophosphorylation. This ATP is very important for the process of light independent photosynthesis. Again, they produce reduced NADP. Also, they produce oxygen as a byproduct. Therefore, in the non-cyclic photophosphorylation, ATP is produced, reduced NADP is produced, and again, oxygen is released to the atmosphere. Now, this product is ATP and reduced NADP is important for the second stage of photosynthesis, which is 
dark reactions or light independent photosynthesis. Whereas oxygen is becomes released to the atmosphere and they can be used by aerobic organisms to undergo their cellular respiration. And the useful products in cyclic one is only ATP. Only ATP is produced in the cyclic photophosphorylation. And again, this ATP is again important in the process of light independent photosynthesis. Here, the photosystem involved. The photosystem involved in non cyclic photophosphorylation is that photosystem one and photosystem two. But in the cyclic one, only one photosystem is involved, which is photosystem one. Let me revise some points on both photosystem one and the photosystem two. Here, electrons in chlorophyll molecule and photosystem two are excited by the energy in the photon of light and they become more energetic in photosystem two. Again, the conditions create splitting of water is so-called photolysis. Here, in the photosystem, Electrons in the chlorophyll molecules become excited, which causes the splitting of water at the second step, which the process of splitting of this water is so-called photolysis. As a result, from two water molecules, oxygen molecules can be released to the atmosphere and four molecules of hydrogen ion and four molecules of electrons produced. The third point is, the primary electron acceptor from the photosystem one is theophatin. This passes the electron to the next molecule in electron transport chain, which is plastoquinin or PQ. Now, the electron then pass along a series of cytochromes and finally to the plastocyanin. The last carrier in the chain of the first electron transport chain, which is in the first electron transport chain, finally, the electron is accepted by this electron acceptor, which is so-called plastocyanin. The electrons lose energy as they are passed from one carrier to another carrier. Here, the fourth point is, one of the molecules in the cytochrome complex is the proton or hydrogen ion pump. As electrons are transferred to and then transferred from these molecules, the energy they lose powers the pump which moves protons from the stroma of the chloroplast to the space inside the thylakoid. This leads to an accumulation of the protons inside the thylakoid, which drives the chemosmotic synthesis of photosynthesis. The fifth point is that electrons in the chlorophyll molecules in photosystem one are excited as the photosystem absorbs photon of light and escape from the molecule, but this electron replaced by the electrons that are passed down the electron transport chain from the photosystem two. The sixth point is the electrons then pass along the second electron transport chain involving the ferrodoxin and the NAD P reductors. Here, the ferrodoxin is the first electron carrier from the photosystem one, but NADP reductase is the enzyme which is important uh, for uh, in the process of electron transport in the photosystem one. At the end of this electron transport chain, they can react with protons, which is hydrogen ion and the NADP, and the stroma of the chloroplast to form reduced NADP which is the final electron acceptor. The steps of light reactions of photosynthesis produce three chemical products. One is oxygen. 
And the second one is NAD PH. And the third one is ATP. NAD PH and ATP is important for the second stage of photosynthesis. Whereas oxygen released to the atmosphere and they can be used by aerobic organisms. Oxygen is produced in the thylakoid lumen by the oxidation of water by photosystem 2. In the photosystem 2, photoautolysis takes place and its hydrolysis or it can uh, split water molecules into hydrogen and iron and oxygen. Therefore, two electrons are removed from water which produces two hydrogen ion and oxygen molecules. Here, two electrons are transferred to the photosystem 2. NAD pH is produced in the stroma using high energy electrons that start in photosystem 2 and are boosted for the second time in the photosystem 1. The two high energy electrons and one hydrogen ion are transferred to NAD B positive to produce NAD pH. Then ATP, which is energy storing compound, is produced in the stroma via the enzyme which is so called ATP synthesis that uses an hydrogen ion electrochemical gradient. Now, let me summarize the overall light dependent photosynthesis that is to show that the exact size of chemo uh, osmosis in photosynthesis now if you see this one is a chloroplast now the carbon dioxide from the atmosphere enter into the leaf and finally it enter into the chloroplast and the chloroplast by the process of uh, light dependent reaction, the water molecules become split and oxygen become released to the atmosphere. And this, uh, the release of oxygen to atmosphere takes place in the thylakoid lumen. Whereas ATP and the NAD pH can be produced in the stroma of the uh, chloroplast. Here, the NAD pH, which is high energy uh, storing compound and important for the process of light independent reaction, can be produced in the stroma of light dependent photosynthesis. Also, with the help of enzyme, ATP synthesis. They can produce ATP. Now, both ATP and NAD pH is energy storing compounds. These two compounds produced in the stroma and they can uh, transport it to the second stage of photosynthesis, which is takes place in the Kelvin cycle. The second stage of photosynthesis is light independent. It takes place by the process of Kelvin cycle. Therefore, in the Kelvin cycle, these two energy storing compounds is very important. Therefore, ATP and the NAD pH move to or transported to the Kelvin cycle. This is all about the uh, light-dependent photosynthesis. Thank you very much.